Hi, Haley. Welcome to the Women Waken podcast. Thank you so much, Whitney. I'm so honored to be here. Very honored to have you in this space. Really excited for this conversation and to connect today. Haley, I think it will be a beautiful conversation. We were just talking about we're feeling kind of rooted right now. We're feeling a little bit of the, the more grounded energy, the more relaxed energy. There's a lot going on as we start this new year. I know that you have a lot going on in the year to come, yet I would love for this to be a moment for us to highlight you and your work, but also your evolution. You use that word to describe your, your personal story, your path through your spiritual work. And I want to hear about that. I want to hear about your story and your evolution, because I think a lot of people out there right now are starting on that path, feeling called to that path. So we want to hear all about your path. Mm, thank you, love. Yes. I totally agree that it is um, profound, the amount, the pure volume of women that are awakening right now. And I do, I am, I am so excited to talk about my evolution because many of us have come into the process of deeper awakening through our yoga practice, through our meditation, through dipping our toe in Buddhism and Eastern spiritual practices, Taoism, Qigong. So all of these beautiful ancient gifts from the East um, that have been such a blessing for my life and such a huge part of my practice. And now I, I see this huge transition or this huge, um, it's like the next level of awakening is this returning back to both our personal ancestral roots and our personal indigenous practices, as well as the indigenous, the, the practices that are indigenous to the feminine body, to the actual bodies of women. And this is deeply profound because as much as we are sold this idea that let's let's use yoga as an example. I'm a deep yoga do devotee. I've been a yoga teacher for um, over a decade, and I I still am in deep devotion in honoring up to that culture and deep devotion to the, my daily practice. And let's be clear, yoga as it has been passed down was passed down by men for men and then brought to the United States and it blew up in a way where 90% of the practitioners are women. And, you know, in, in many ways, it's like, that's, that's beautiful. Women have, have, um, adapted this practice that is so healing for our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. And where things are rooted actually matters. And this idea of universalism is always tricky in any, in any field, in any way, anytime things get universalized, unfortunately, when we're running into universalism, let's say in a spiritual practice, generally we're actually talking about a men's spiritual practice, particularly in the context of the history of women, because women's specific spiritual practices of course, unique to each individual region from which our ancestors came, and yet rooted in the universal experience of the womb and the feminine anatomy, the, the anatomy of a woman's body, it has actually been repressed, hidden, ridiculed, shamed, um, we, we, the reality is our ancestresses, no matter where they're from around the globe, they have been burned for practicing women's practice. And what an incredible gift and blessing that we are at a time in the rise of the divine feminine where we are, we're so blessed to, to be experiencing enough safety that we can begin the process of, of gently remembering begin the process of very slowly, slowly um, 
diving back into these regions of our being, our energetic and physical being that have been deeply shamed and ignored and that we haven't been taught about. Not only have we not been taught about, but that um, in the mainstream cultural framework have been, you know, seen as as less than or seen as something to actually repress in order to get ahead in a men's world, a man's world. So now bringing it back to your original question is that is that has been the evolution is that um, yoga and meditation and Buddhism were really my pathway of healing 15 years of deep eating disorders, body image dysmorphia, um, extreme um, extreme self-hatred really to the point of suicide, of attempted suicide. And I will, ne you know, I, I know that story is so common for many women is that yoga, you know, saved my life. And it wasn't until I was invited into a circle of wise women and I was invited to begin to drop in to the unique experience of what it is to be a womb carrier and what it is to have a hormonal body that literally cycles with the moon and in that way literally dictates every little inch every little inch of our bodies and our um our cardiovascular system our muscular system our um lymphatic system like every single system of the human body is literally carried by the endocrine system by the hormonal system and these are things that these are very basic physiological facts that get skipped over in the spiritual community and i see now that there is this mirroring of my own experience in the women, in my clients, in the women around me, and in the world at large, that we're remembering that not only are we so blessed to have access to the non-dualist practices that come from the East that have been so liberating in for Western culture, with so much gratitude to those regions and so much honoring of the origins of those practices, but also that there is a whole other layer as women and that just practicing these, um, you know, just working with meditation or just working with, with yoga, I really see the future of women's practice. I think this conversation is going to be a hugely different conversation in 10 years because the, the rate of realization that there is more. There is more. And not only is there more, so long as we're ignoring the physiological and spiritual gifts and superpowers that exist within us, we're only going, our healing can really only go so far. So now it's my pleasure and my privilege to really support women to reclaim their ancestral practices and to reclaim the the ultimate indigenous landscape to them, which is their own physical bodies and the mysterious and sensual and incredibly complex and powerful potency of their womb. Yeah. So beautiful, Haley, and so powerful that message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your personal experience. Thank you for sharing these inspiring and thoughtful words, which I know will travel to the ears that need to hear them because there really is something remarkable happening. And it's what I believe is that it's women remembering who we are and recognizing the falsehoods that we have been told, not for decades, not for hundreds of years, for thousands of years for as long possibly as we can have a recording of human history, women have been told that we are not powerful and that we are not worth having a voice at the table, a place at the table. This was never true. And in fact, I've heard various whether it's historians or channelers 
who speak of long ago times where it was understood that women were actually the best suited to be in charge and to have the place of power because they knew, as you said, it, they honored things bigger than themselves. You said that our menstrual cycle rec recognizes and represents the cycles of the moon. Women are attuned to that. So I've heard that when women ruled, it wasn't about ego or one individual reigning over all, having the power. It was about honoring all of the cycles and systems in the glorious world that we live in. We lost touch with that. Along the way, fear became instilled in people. Greed became instilled in people. Women were told to be quiet, to not speak because we did not align with those ideas. We did not believe that might was the best way, that force and power were the most important. So we were told, get move aside so that we are the masculine can come forward. And masculine has always been present, but it was the masculine aspect of innovation, of creation, of the beautiful ways that we can express ourselves from the roots of the feminine. That's all to say that we have really detached from what I believe is the most efficient and effective way to experience and, ex and express life on our planet. When women are given a place to have their voice and to have their input, things run in a, in a more symbiotic, harmonious way. That's been taken away. And we've come to understand that that's just how it is. That of course, men know better. Of course, men are smarter and stronger and more able to do this. Again, this is just all to say that what you're speaking to is the remembrance, the time that we're in where we, it is safe. Just as you said, Haley, for so long, it was not safe. We were killed by the millions. For thousands of years, we were killed. Women were killed and tortured and burned for trying to bring back and re and re remind people of actually this is how it's been done before and this is what's possible and we were told that's witchcraft that's crazy mm -hmm. talk mm -hmm. it won't be heard of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can't live the way we're living anymore because we're not honoring one another we're not honoring the planet we don't honor ourselves and just as you spoke of Haley so many of us had that war with ourselves most people are at war with themselves. Most people, or at least a lot of people reach the point. I know I did as well as you did where I would, I didn't want to be here. I'd rather have it over. Cause it was so brutal. It was so painful. It was such misery to live with such turmoil in my mind, just constant, just noise and confusion. It's not how it's meant to be. So mm -hmm. My sort of tagline for Women Waken is restore, align, rise. And so maybe we can take a moment because I know, Haley, that a lot of your work began with helping women restore because we mm -hmm. cannot rise to who we're meant to be if we haven't addressed and healed the things that have kept us from being fully aligned and in our power as the feminine in a place where we can celebrate the womb and our pussies and everything about being a woman that's what's coming but first we have to attend to what's been hurt what's been neglected the misconceptions because if we don't attend to those they still kind of float around and sort of take up space so it's, can you speak to that because i know that you work with deprogramming self-judgment and emotional instability mm -hmm. and that even just the the call to yoga is a lot about remembering that we are a powerful force and we don't need anything. You know, I remember a really transformative moment for me when I was at the depths of that battle to love myself, to not self-destruct, to not destroy myself. I was so caught up and I didn't look the right way. I didn't get the right response that I wanted. I, I wasn't the person I wanted to be. And I was so upset and I was in a yoga class and I felt for the first time in my life, I felt that heart opening. And I was just in, you know, sports bra and pants doing yoga. And I thought, you don't need a damn thing to be a giver of love. Mm. You don't need the looks. You don't need the attention. You don't need money. You don't need anything. It's right here, naked as you come. It's in your soul. It's inherent. And that was a turning point for me, mm. which is the gift that yoga gives. So again, turn it back to you, Haley, talking, we start by restoring. How have you helped yourself and women to, to deprogram 
that judgment and self rejection. Mm. Oh my gosh. Everything you just, you just said like, resonated so deeply with me. Oh, there's so much. And even just the, the close of what you were just speaking in terms of your experience in yoga, I resonate with that so much and who I, I, I think that we can all in this moment, listening to this, speaking this together across space and time, like unite hands in that experience of awakening to the truth of our inherent worthiness through, in, in your case, in my case, through yoga and that little glimmer, that little taste of truth is enough to spur us on to our path. And that's so powerful. And I want to really honor that. And in terms of restoration, it's great to get these little glimmers, but going straight to the menstrual cycle, the hormonal cycle, which is the seasonal cycle, which is the moon cycle, which is the actual cycle of a 24 hour day. So the sun cycle, um, that all of these layers are the truth of the feminine. So we can get a little taste in Shavasana of like, oh, my body's starting to unwind, tension starting to release. I feel my heart that's been holding tight in my chest because I have to um, keep pushing and striving at my work or or to be good enough or whatever. All these ways that women really experience this urge to, um, to prove ourselves in what we often don't even think of as a man's world, honestly, at this point in the, in, in 2023, you know, we don't even necessarily put those words to it. But when we start to sink back into the ancient and inherent wisdom of nature's cycles, which are mapped very directly into our bodies, it is actually the only true way, I believe, to, unless you have the pure freedom to be in pure rest all the time and just pure doing whatever you want all the time, because I think in that case, you would automatically be sinking to your cycles and to the cycles of nature. But for us as modern women with full, beautiful lives, to drop back into this very primal truth, into this, really, the, the menstrual cycle is the female shamanic path. And even for those of us who no longer bleed or, or who are in this process of no longer having a consistent bleed, the female system still operates via the cycles of the moon. Like it still operates on a 28-ish day calendar, whereas the male hormonal cycle very much operates on a 24-hour cycle. And, you know, I don't, I can't, I can't make this shit up. This is just basic science, you know? And so our entire world, our work world, our, our culture is based around a male hormonal cycle. So there's actually no way to fully rejuvenate, to fully restore without um, taking a really fierce, uh, a really fierce stand for truth, which is that we're not actually designed to operate the same every single day. And the rates, I really meant, I have them somewhere here, but I wanted to share the stats for the rates of women's burnout because, you know, it's always been high. It's always been much, 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 much higher than the rates of male burnout. But it is increasing dramatically. And the more the world speeds up and the more chaotic our global political situation becomes, of course, the, the harder it is for women to sustain a consistent output, whether that be in work, in motherhood, in all of the ways that we offer our, our, our potency, our gifts, our energy 
to those around us and to the world, women's bodies literally are attuned to the collective. So when chaos is reigning in the news, like we are going to feel it on a deeper level. And when we are pushed to be consistent and to not take rest, to not take deep inner reflection time, to not slow down in winter, when that's not a part of our cultural framework, our, that's not a, even a, for, for most women and most of the globe, that's not even a thing. <laughs> like it doesn't even, it's not even a part of the way we think, or we, most of us have never been told that this is a value. Um, and we've gotten glimmers of it. If you've studied Ayurveda or you studied Chinese medicine, then you know, like, yes, we're going to shift our relationship to rest and to food based on the seasons. But for women, it's a whole other level is in order to avoid burnout is one way to it's that's kind of the negative way to say it. And the positive way to say it would be in order to fully reclaim our joy our purpose, our sense of living with ease. And it, it, of course, it's only in that space of ease that we can be in a, in our fullest offering to the ones we love, to our kids, to our, to our work, to our, um, to our friends, to the world at large and to making decisions that promote a, a better world. The only way we can ever arrive there is by reattuning to these cycles. And the most direct, and of course, these cycles I'm talking about, these are these are the seasonal cycles. These are the daily cycles. So that's our circadian rhythm cycle, which means, you know, we slow down towards the evening, we sleep through the night, we wake and energize in the day. Um, these and, and of course, the cycles of the moon from new, from the energy, from the mysterious energy of the dark moon and, and all of the ways that all of our shit comes up during the dark moon. And then the new moon, as it starts to build this possibility of potential and then the peak of ovulation when in, in our ovulation and in the full moon, when our sex drive is like on fire and we are like alive and awake to our confidence and our power. And then the descent into the shadow lands, into where the inner critic tends to live, um, which is in that what tends to get called PMS realm, which actually just means the culture doesn't understand the superpowers of that period. So all of these cycles I'm talking about, I find that the most direct way for me and for my clients to reconnect to deep restoration, to reconnect to deep truth, and to reconnect to that sense you were talking about, that sense of worthiness, that sense of inherent value beyond what we can accomplish, beyond what we do, is to drop back in with our hormonal cycle, to drop back in with listening to when do we need rest? When do we need reflection? When do we need to be a freaking wild woman running through the forest? And when when do we need to just play? All of this template for harmony lives within our own bodies. And this is really the only way. This is the way the micro shifts to the macro. So you were mentioning that, like you were really making that connection between the individual and the collective. And the only hope for the future of the world is that we actually return to the logic of nature. As far as patriarchy has been um, thriving over the past couple thousand years, has been a transition away from the cycles of nature and really a um, a repression of nature, a rape of nature, and a um, just a general ignoring of nature. And this has paralleled the experience of women's bodies. We could say all those things about women's bodies because women's bodies are nature and we are attuned to the cycles of nature. So I truly believe that reclaiming connection to the seasons, connection to the daily light and connection to our own hormonal cycle is actually the pathway, the global, the pathway for global peace. It's literally the only way. And of course, 
everything is born from a womb. Like that's just the way that it works, you know? And so women have been the leaders and continue to be the leaders and must continue to be the leaders in terms of shifting this way of, in, in terms of shifting global culture. And it starts with us, it starts with our bodies. It starts with the way we drop in and we listen and we rest and we tend. And I can also, I can also hear like the voice in my mind that's like, well, how can you rest when there's so much to do and there's money to make and there's a family to raise? And I, I like, yes, I hear that in my consciousness. And I hear that in the consciousness of your listeners and all women, because this is just the reality of our lives is that we have full schedules. How are we supposed to drop in? How are we supposed to listen? And my answer to that is very gently, very compassionately in very little bits at a time. And the best way to start, I feel one of the best ways is drop into your women's circle Connect with connect with other women and who are mindful and who are conscious and who are willing to do this inner work of healing themselves, because that is the seed that when we connect with each other and we start to normalize these deep challenges that we experience and also the deep power that is um, the seed within waiting, waiting, waiting to bloom. And we see that in other women. It is such an activator. It is such an awakener. And it really creates, I have found, and and this is why I've devoted my life to this work, is that I have found that it creates this, this allowance of our truth and it, this courage to hear the truth within without being, without that voice of cultural judgment. It kind of lowers the volume on that on that mainstream cultural, um, you know, self-judgment and just lack of understanding of what it is to be in a feminine body. So that's why this podcast is so amazing too. Let's call it back is like dropping in with women's podcasts. Another great example is like hearing other women, seeing where they're coming from, being inspired by other women. Like what a powerful way to give ourselves permission to be what we truly are and to honor the truth of our beautiful um, bodies and all of the potential that they hold. Remarkable. Everything, everything you just said is um, so important for people to hear. And what I loved Haley is that in in a sort of a, a round roundabout indirect way, what you described is when we're trying and working to restore, to heal, to shift our ideas about ourselves, sometimes it's, it, we can't just focus too much on what happened and what we want to get rid of. What it more so is about generating energy towards communing with others, engaging in things that remind us of our purpose and maybe most importantly, getting us out of our small self into our bigger self. The women collective is needing to come together at this time. The women energy is needing to join and restore and remember our power and our abilities. However, and, and well, I'll, I'll say first that and I think that's how women can begin to shed these, like you said, that nagging in our head that tells us, yeah, but I, I'm not good enough and I don't deserve to have a voice and I don't have a place here. As we join together, we realize, uh-uh, that's not even, it's not even all about me in that way. It's about, as I come together, I realize my place in the whole and I let those insecurities go because they were just the, the fear that was planted in me because I thought I was just an individual. And I thought I had to be this woman who had to fight to even have a place and a voice. As we join together, that can wash away, just be shed, shed away as we remember that we are speaking as one. And, and another thing you said, Haley, that really sticks out to me, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of the shamanic term, seven generations, the concept of we're not doing today. We're not, what we do today is not about changing the world overnight. It's about how our ancestors in the future will get to live seven generations from now. So many of us think is that exactly as you spoke to, which is, well, how am I supposed to rest or honor my cycles? I have a job. I have kids. And it's true. And we have to honor that we need to work from where we're from. 
We're not looking to make this giant leap where all of a sudden we're living the way that our ancestors lived a long time ago, where they were more in touch with the na with nature and with women's circles and with communication. We do what we can with what we have, little increments at a time, because again, that's what plants the seeds for what we're going to see seven generations from now, where I truly believe people will look back at this time and use it as a parable for how dire things can get and how dark when we lose touch with our true selves and with one another and with the earth. Mm. We're slowly going to make our way back to that point. But it's just as you said, the little things, if you can't find a schedule where you get to rest when you want to, I mean, I mean, really what we should be doing is hibernating during the winter, right? We are truly meant to take more spacious time to just breathe and relax and sleep and recharge during these winter months. Our culture doesn't allow it. And most of us are not able to do that. But what we can do is just as you said, in little times, give yourself, even if it's just a breath with yourself that says, I hear you. I hear that you're needing rest. I'm connecting with you. I'm going to, you know, even it's just a, a 10 minute nap or taking the time to do a yoga class in a day. We do what we can in this space. We find women's circles. We listen to podcasts and hear if something resonates and little by little, because what happens, everything starts little by little until all of a sudden it quickens and it happens very quickly. And that's, we're going to start to see more women mobilize. We're going to come together in little circles. And then those little circles are going to join together. And the term I've often used my vision for women waken is to be a Harbor for all these different ships of women collectives to come into so that we can commune and come together and discuss and share our visions and realize and remember our power and our voice. So thank you for speaking to how valuable it is to just begin that change so that we automatically begin to release and shed the misconceptions and make little tiny shifts that are going to have such an impact in future generations from now. Oh my gosh. You, I love you. <laughs> like, I love you too. <laughs> great. I, I feel, I just, it's, you know, I don't know if, you know, you could see it, but like, it was the whole time you were speaking, I was just like, oh, like I was getting all amped up over here and just feeling like, yes. Just well, we need that too. We need to champion each other. I mean, we need to be yeah, pumped. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's so real. It's so true. And I can just feel the words as you, I can feel the truth of the words as you speak that I absolutely 1000% agree that and, uh, you know, it's like, I pray that this is true when I am an elder. So much of what I find useful for my own life and work is I think about, I've always been connected to my wise crone. I've always been, I, I, when I, even when I was born, even when I was young, like I felt like I was an old woman and I, <laughs> to this day, I still oh, like, lady, baby. <laughs> yeah, I still connect with her because when I see very clearly a vision of myself in a circle of wise crones and the mothers of our beautiful maidens who are just becoming just becoming women are brought into the circle and we are blessing them and we are showing them what it is to be a woman and how powerful it is and how beautiful and how pleasurable and how sensual and how th this gift that we have to bring to the world in so many ways. And I know this to be true, that that is what I will be doing when I'm 80. And it is really the only way that, I mean, I didn't have that experience when I started my blood, like no one ever, I mean, especially now as uh, being almost 40, like uh, the immensity has dawned on me of how I was, I mean, bless my beloved mother as she did really the best she can. And she continues to, but no one ever taught me how to be a woman. No one ever taught me. I mean, I was taught how to put on makeup. Like I was taught how to, um, relate to like, relate, relate manipulatively to men. <laughs> like, you know, I was taught like I, but I was never taught. What is it? To what is the potency? What is the power? What is the truth of being a woman? And what kind of tending that actually requires? And I know that 
will be at a certain level when I'm a crone, but I know that in future generations, absolutely, we will be looking back and we will be listening to this podcast as a historical archive, right? In, in the archive and we'll, we will be like, really? Like that was, I mean, we'll be like, oh, that was awesome. Like, I love that. I mean, it's, it's a lot of the way that I look back at like seventies, eighties, like feminism. I'm like, okay, that, that was really valuable and important. And they were also missing a piece. <laughs> and now we can, um, of course, that's just the way it works. I mean, that's the way evolution and growth works is that we are now dropping into another layer and our descendants will be dropping into another layer. And several generations from now, we will be like, wow, we really got lost there for a couple of thousand years. And we really had to crawl our way out eat, 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 like little by little. And um, it's so powerful to be part of that process. I mean, we are the transition team. That's what we're doing. That's, and it's a big responsibility because in many ways we don't have a map except our internal, our soul, you know, our internal guidance are, which is enough of, it's, it's all the map we need is all the map we need. That's it. And that's the other part of the feminine that's been forgotten, that's been buried, is to trust yourself above all else, to listen to the wise voice inside of you, to listen to your intuition. That has been buried. It's been dismissed as a whimsical mm -hmm. idea, something that's not of value. Uh, a great disservice to all mankind is mm -hmm. to deny our intuition. And that's what's coming up that cannot be contained anymore. I, I feel this uprise of mother earth herself who's saying, listen, listen to the trees, listen to your heart, listen to the, the, the breathing in and out of the universe. You can't deny it anymore. You guys act like everything else around you is disposable and is, you know, just mechanical, but it's everything is alive. And Mother Earth herself will only be treated this way for so long. And we've seen uprisings from her and we're going to continue to as long as we deny these things. So absolutely listening to yourself is always, I always use that disclaimer on my show. I say, listen, if this connects with you, great, but always check in with yourself. You know, we help one another out, but each one of us is a piece of this big, bigger picture of a, I always use the, the analogy of a mosaic. We need every single little piece to have the whole picture come together. So everyone's thoughts are valuable, but don't forget that you have your own thoughts too. And that's also what the women, because that's a collaborative thing where the masculine tends to be a little bit more, you know, the, the individual, the, the one person having the one place. No, we all have a place. There's no, it's, I've heard more and more recently that the, the age of, you know, the, that the savior and the martyr is over, that it's all of us coming together to work together to ach achieve that and to make great progress. And it really is a remarkable time to be alive as treacherous as it can seem and scary. It's exhilarating and because we are literally seeing this turning of the tides and this uprising of the remembrance of what the great truths of life of the universe, but also the beloved feminine. And the, another thing in the same way that we want to make little changes, something else I've been attuned to lately is a lot of us just by our mere existence are helping shift the energy, the vibration of the planet. And I want to speak to this Haley, because we both are attuned to this. And I think more people might need to hear this or could, could benefit from it. You and I both have moved to different regions of the world that are known to be sort of spiritual vortexes, regions that are the ley lines are aligned with some of our older ancient um, civilizations that existed on earth. That's a whole nother topic, but um, where they knew these things, these were all alive and well and thriving in cultures that's been completely buried and cut off now. So even if, if you're just feeling called to go to certain places, um, you know, you spoke of going to Costa Rica and I have so many friends who have been drawn there recently and spent time there. And I personally have been bouncing around the country for the past few years, completely just surrendering to my guidance. You know, I used to be a very forceful person that wanted to be in charge and thought I knew how everything should work and things didn't go so smoothly. But now that I've been following that guidance, 
I find that I get exactly what I meant to have wherever I go. So I think that's another powerful thing to remind women is you don't necessarily have to start a business. You don't necessarily have to have specific innovative ideas you want to share. It's about just exploring where you're guided or exploring even from where you are, uh, just tapping into that. Yes, yes, yes. This thread of intuition and following inner guidance, so deeply powerful. I really appreciate this framework as a, maybe like the primary, st the primary way to enter into this work of feminine reconnection. Because like you said, I just want to underline what you said about in a patriarchal paradigm, there is a right way and a wrong way. And whoever has the right way is really just the one who has the most like, I mean, it used to be like physical force, right? But like now maybe like it's money, really. So there is this, and, and the way of the feminine is this holding of the collective and this holding of multiple truths and this holding of listening inward and also listening to all voices. And that breaking down the paradigm of um, the way, I mean, we talked about inner critic earlier. It's like inner critic is actually just an internalization of the culture that we live in. We live in a culture that says, if you look a certain way, you are valid. We live in a culture that says, if you're, you know, a certain age, you're more valid than another age. Or if you have a certain amount of money, you're more valid than, you know, and if you live in a certain country, like, et cetera, et cetera. And of course that gets internalized on the, to the individual. And so breaking down the inner critic is really about dropping into the space underneath and dropping into our, our inner voice. And really, like you said, it's that process of, you know, I just, you're the perfect example of someone who you've been surrendering to spirit in such a powerful way. Like you have been like, what am I supposed to do next? <laughs> like I'm listening, I am in full receptivity and I'm going to not sit there when I get that advice and like think about it and write out like a huge list of like pros and cons and like check in with like 30 people, including experts and like pay someone to tell me what to do next. But like, actually I'm just gonna trust my guidance. And so what a beautiful, um, dramatized example of the ways that as women we can in our daily life really just begin to shift our awareness from our the way that most of us have been raised which is an external focus on accomplishment and also like how we're perceived back inward to an internal to the experience of our inner landscape and this is why, and I mean, uh, yeah, it's valuable because we receive, we receive this huge, huge inner guidance, but it's also, it feels so much better. And this is one way it's like my, my work with women is so much based around their empowerment, but I come at it often when I, when I'm reaching out to new audiences, like I often come at it in inviting them into deeper pleasure, into deeper sensuality, into deeper sexuality. And it's so real. It's such a great pathway in, but it's all going to the same place. It's almost like I'm just kind of like hooking people with the sexy stuff because it is it like, it is a pathway back into like, what is true in here. And fortunately it is more pleasurable to live that way. Like, yes, we are going to meet our demons. Yes, we are going to meet emotions that we've probably repressed for many years, if not lifetimes. And that journey is so incredibly worth it because every time we're able to choose bravery by returning back inward to our heart versus choosing to just live from the neck up or choosing to make make our decisions based on other people's opinions or other people's benefit even, then we are not only do we up level in our power, it's like a video game, but we're like, 
gain, gain a little more. Level like achieved. <laughs> Level achieved. Level unlocked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our energetic capacity expands, our heart expands, but also we literally experience more physical health and vitality, of course, and we experience more sense of connection with our body, with our, with our internal sensation. And that's not like fluffy bullshit. Like that's literally where intuition lives. Like it literally lives. All awakening happens in the body. It doesn't happen in the mind. It doesn't happen when you're in meditation and all of a sudden you go to the astral realm, then you, you just, you become enlightened and you just stay there forever. That's not what it is to be an earth being with two legs walking on planet earth. And it's funny because I live, you know, I live in Sedona. I love this place. Bless this beautiful place. So many healers have gathered here. Only half of us are walking on planet earth. Here. So it's like, and, and all of it's valuable, all of it's useful. And this is another big part of the feminine spiritual path is like, it is an embodied path. It's not a star path. I mean, yes, like go to the stars, like, yes, like obviously astrology informs our body, like informs what's happening in our bodies and in our lives. But we can't just be in the astral realms all the time because then we're out of our bodies. And sure, maybe we're receiving transmissions from other realms, but what's actually true inside? So the path of embodiment is like, I love like our conversation has gone to this like big, huge, theoretical and like inspirational, like, like multi-generational expansive place. And it's so fun to be there. I so love it. And ultimately it really comes back down to grounding it in the body, in this moment right now, because this is the only moment and in and the, the, one of the most powerful ways to do that is just like get outside and just see what she's doing because she is holding all the teachings that we need. Like, yes, bless all of the beautiful texts on this planet. Bless all of these amazing lineages and these ancient practices. Like, thank you for your liberation. And if every text disappeared tomorrow, this knowing would arrive again and again here right now in this moment, because this is the truth. This is the truth. This isn't something someone wrote down in a book a long time ago. Now we're like studying the words and like following it verbatim. This is the truth of being inside of a body, which is the truth of being literally filled with the love of spirit and the love of the universe that is here to guide us and is here to um, to support us, to manifest our soul's purpose in this lifetime. So powerful. <laughs> yeah, so big. I love how big we've gotten. Woo! <laughs> We're open. But that was, uh, you know, such a profound point because it is true. It's a remarkable thing because we have seen civilizations rise and fall and rise and fall. And yet again, the same steady, true voice always comes through time and again, just as you said, everything around us can disappear. The, the structures, everything we've built, the society we've established, it could be washed away. And what will always return is the same tenets. And it's the same tenet that you'll find somewhere in every religion right? There is, every religion is a different shade and flavor presentation, but they all have these same tenets. Isn't that interesting? The one, as I called the one, the th same thing that will always return. And what I feel about the feminine is it's a, a part of that single, because that, that one truth is everything, but within everything is a lot of different nuanced avenues. And, and the thing that needs attention right now to me is the feminine. And I want to come back, Haley, to what you said about feminism and the waves of feminism and how each wave, just as you said, everything has its time and its place, a lot of different brush strokes to get us to the bigger picture. But so far, if I could sum up feminism, I would say it was women trying to step forward as men to say, I deserve to have a place. So I'm going to be 
use my might. I'm going to use force. I'm going to be more in my masculine. And hey, what else were we supposed to do? We weren't allowed to vote. We weren't allowed to work. We weren't allowed to do all of these things. We had no presence in any of these governing bodies of any of the systems and structures. So that at the time, that was the best we could do. But that's not the case anymore. What wants to come forward, just as you said, the truth that wants to come forward are new ideas from the feminine about how we can structure and live in our world. And those are going to eventually be a part of all of our structures. Right now, our structures are literally completely masculine. They were all born of predominantly white men. Every single thing, the finance, the education, the politics, the law, everything. There's no place for the feminine. And that is what's slowly changing. And that is, as you just described, what women need to honor and let come forward. We have to let go of the fear of judgment, of being told, oh my gosh, who is this flake? <laughs> what is she talking about? It's so important for us to allow for these things and to begin speaking of them because, hey, every single innovation that's ever created, when someone first spoke of it, people thought they were nuts. And they said, I'm, what, get out of my office. You're, you have, this is a stupid idea. No one's going to believe it. And now it's the internet, right? It's things that were once ridiculous are now so prevalent and corporate in our world. It's women's time because we're not going to be burned at the stake. We're not going to be dragged into the town center to be ridiculed for what we have to say. So it's time. And it's the, I don't even want to use the word feminism. It's just the the return, right, of the divine feminine coming forward. And what I want to get into, Haley, is your concept of womifestation. Is this is really coming from that deep place within us, the literal channel to the universe, which is you can call it our womb, our pussy, our power that we've been denied because all we've been told it was was honestly a means for men to have pleasure, for men to, you know, get what they want, plant their seed. But the reclamation of our womb, of our feminine, pussy, whatever you want to call it, this is the turning point we're finding. And so more spaces for women to embrace that and allow that power to come through and bring forth the messages that come and the manifestation that comes from that. Because I want to hear you talk about womanifestation, but I'm guessing that it means bringing forth the gifts of the feminine and manifesting them into the real world. Mm, yes, yes. Oh, so beautiful. And I did want to make one note is that, yes, we're, we're so blessed to be in the United States, but there are actually still places on this planet where women are dragged into the town square. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's important to note just because it's like, <clears throat> I think there can be this illusion of how far we've come. And I totally just want to, you know, I want to really agree with you about the history of you know, really the modern history of women's women's it's called women's empowerment. Right. So let's let's yeah, let's keep that word. Um, and it's been power under a patriarchal structure. So, yes, it has been huge for women to own a bank account. I mean, literally, I, I don't even I it was like. I want to even say it was like early 80s or late 70s or something like in some places where women couldn't even own a bank. Like it was just insane, like how recent it's or how couldn't get a credit card. It's it's insane. So, yes, all very imperative part of the evolution and the way that this has trickled down or continues to be part of our relationship to the masculine and the feminine is that I know uh, in hearing your story, even just in this it, previously, but also in this podcast of like being really almost like just in your masculine. And I was so in my masculine. I mean, it was so good at accomplishing, so good at the resume, so good at looking like I had it all together, so good at pushing myself really hard, so good at staying up all night writing papers, so good at repressing my physical body and, and her needs and just getting on the treadmill for an hour every day, you know? And this is what I, I continue to see in women is that we've become really freaking good at the masculine. We become really good. And unfortunately, um, Often the ways that we have become or the ways that it's gotten warped 
is that it's actually been warped into the wounded masculine often, which is this way of really like it's this perfectionism that there's many of us that are sensing that the perfectionism that may have gotten us where we are today is no longer serving us. It's this cat, this this title of super mom. It's this superwoman experience that does precede burnout. It is the ways that we tense and disconnect um, from our inner landscape. And womanifestation really requires or manifestation in a body with a womb really requires that we get a little more familiar with what are these primal and primary energies of the masculine and the feminine and not just the ways that they've been warped by culture. So the true essence and incredible gift of the masculine as a universal principle inside of of men, women, non-gender, you know, non-binary people, inside of animals, inside of plants, inside of um, landscapes is this deep holding. So if the feminine is the breath, the masculine is the witness of the breath. And the masculine is that, um, it's, it's, it's that um, protector of, of all that is sacred and all that is innocent and all that is holy. It is that part of us that is willing to do whatever we need to do in order to honor that intuition that arises from within, that voice of spirit that moves through us, guiding us to our next step as a puzzle piece that is of greater service to this mysterious puzzle of which we are part of this infinite, um, you know, earth experience and all of these beings that we are part. And so we do need the safety of, I mean, one example is we're we're here in the United States. Like we are blessed that fortunately we may not be burned at the stake. Still, women are dragged across. You know, their reputations are dragged across the internet in ways that are um, demeaning. But we do have enough safety at this point, right? For f- to where, um, and again, I want to situate myself as a you know the 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 privilege that I have as a white middle class woman. Um, but if we feel safe enough to drop in word and to actually meet the places within us that have been wounded, then we can begin to unwind and release. And it is only from this place of relaxation and connection inward to I mean, think about it. Like women don't orgasm if they're tense. Women don't conceive if they're tense. The stats on conception are if you're trying to get pregnant and you're sh- and you're in a stressful environment, your likelihood of getting pregnant are is so much less. And it's like, of course, <laughs> because why would evolution want to bring a baby into an environment where it's going to be at threat? And this is true of the female anatomy is that in order to even connect with our pussy, in order to drop into any semblance of true pleasure, we do need to be in a space of relaxation. And that is one of the, one of the physical truths of women's bodies that, that translates into the power of feminine manifestation, which is that we are like the the erotic life force, the sexual life force, the erotic life force, the sensual life force of women is our most sustainable battery. It is our most potent boost of anything we want or anything in the world we want to create, the life, we want to create the person we want to be. And so the foundation of womifestation as I teach it is that really it's not about getting what we want because oftentimes we get what we want. I mean, I've heard so many people, I've even had 
you know, back before I was working with feminine techniques, when I, when I was still a, you know, I was, I've always been a transformational coach, like, and I would have clients who, who would double their income using, you, you know, when we were working together and they would be so fucking stressed. And it, and it's like, what's the use of doubling your income if you hate your life? So instead, what we want to do is we want to anchor into, we want to become we want to feel in our bodies. We want to feel in our, we want to be that person who invites in, who, who just experiences naturally what it is that we desire. And even above and beyond that, what I find, because of course the manifestation paradigm, uh, it's so, it's so popular. I mean, it's just, it's huge. It's like a multi-billion dollar industry. But the big names are men. And there's a reason that it doesn't work in the same way for women. And one big piece of that is that we, I find as women and I find with my clients is that we do actually need to be connected to a bigger why. It's not going to be enough for us to just double our income. We want to know that we are, we are part of creating safety in our family. We want to know that we're part of creating a new world. We want to know that there's a bigger meaning to all of this. And so womb manifestation is very much about inviting ourselves back into our bodies and inviting the healing of a deep connection to the power of our root which I really want to note is a, tr it's a tricky place for most women. The stats on, on the percentages of women that have been raped are staggering and they continue, it continues to be true. So this isn't something that, you know, is necessarily not going to necessitate deep inner work and healing of our relationship to our pussy, of our relationship to our womb. It's a part of it. Healing the feminine is healing our womb, is healing our heart womb. And when we can get in this place where we're deeply connecting into the potency of the, the openness of the womb. So just to wrap up the way that manifestation works is like the womb is... It, the the logic of the feminine is I always think of egg wisdom like the egg she sits there and she receives the gifts and the masculine is fucking let's do this and runs <laughs> runs at like let's do it and it's a competition how quickly can you get there and all of that's great <laughs> all of that's great because you know we all have both parts and we need both parts in order to live the lives we want to live and as women we can't just be focused on our like this is the healing that's happening as a culture is that as women we are remembering the other piece of the puzzle we are remembering the wisdom of the egg and we are inviting a spaciousness where we can actually magnetize the life we want by stepping into that now. And really trusting our trusting our intuition, trusting our sensation, because our turn on is our truth. Our, 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 our desire is our fuel. And it is the way spirit works through us to manifest our life's purpose. And it is the way our spirit works through us to manifest our little piece of the puzzle that is going to seem mysterious probably even till the day we die, you know, but is such an important piece of this global healing that is occurring in this moment. Yes. Haley. Yes. On everything, <laughs> but just, I, I'm going to forget all the points I want to talk about. So I need to hone in on this one. The desire, the feminine desire, what I just visualized when you said that. So the earth the world, the universe came from desire, a desire from source one, whatever you called it, that thought, what would happen if I experienced myself? It had a desire to know itself. And you spoke to this earlier, but the way that the, the feminine creates and the, the masculine honors and supports that which is created. And I just had the vision that it's a very different desire that the feminine desire is something that's organically brought forth to existence for the sake of existence, not because of might or 
impressiveness, but just for the sake of it. And that when the, the feminine tap, that's why feminine sexuality is absolutely just infinitely powerful. We don't even scratch the surface. Again, we've been reduced to something that can provide pleasure. That's it. But we are reclaiming our sexuality of, listen, guess what's going on down here? The fucking void of the universe. The infinite yeah. abyss of potential is literally between my fucking <laughs> yeah. legs. Yeah. Not only in giving birth, but to what women create is so sacred and powerful. And I've heard somebody say that. They said that men, their men's purpose is to serve the feminine. They are remarkably capable of so many things, but it's all about tending to what is birthed by a woman, woman bringing forth their desires, listening to their desires and bring them forth, conceiving them into the world is going to change the world right now. It's just man kind of just sort of takes it and then just runs with it and has just, you know, distorted it, perverted it, just made it so based in greed and power and all of that. So yes, yes, yes. Women reclaiming their desires. And then I also love what you said about the difference between the feminine essence of manifestation. We absolutely are immersed in the masculine concept, which is get, you'll be a millionaire. You'll do it. You get to be a millionaire. Just follow this plan and you'll be a millionaire. And everyone's like, yes, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be rich. But nobody stops to ask, is that what you really want? Is that what is, what will that mean to you? If you're a millionaire, will you actually be in the essence of what is a, a, a is happiness is joy is peace. I remember having a client who was a hustler, this woman who just grinded as a, as a business owner and worked so freaking hard. And she said, you know, I made a million dollars and I was happy for about a minute. And then I got up to the level of millionaires. And the only thing people talked about was well, who's making 10 million. Who's, and then once you do, it's just this never ending thing. And she thought, and in, you know, the, the sacred space of the, of the therapy room, she said, I don't, I don't even know if I'm happy, but I can't stop. I can't stop driving after the next thing because it just, I don't know what else, because we're not being satisfied. That's the problem with the mask and is you're not taking the time to be satiated. It's just this hunger. That's like ever consuming and devouring, which we see on our earth. <laughs> that's all we're doing is devouring. That's why we're depleting ourselves and everything around us. So yes, the feminine, and I remember hearing this and it, it meant so much to me because I know that my future will unfold in a very unique way, but I don't know what it's going to look like. And I have to just trust. And I heard this, it said, don't worry so much about what it's going to be. Just think about what it's going to feel like. And just focus on that essence of how do you want to feel? That's all that matters. Because just as you said, the life that you really want might not be a seven, eight figure thing. It just is a way of life that feels peaceful. You have your needs met. You have the ability to do things you want to do, be with people you want. It creates happiness because we all have this idea that success is best. But just as you said, if you have a giant business, you're going to be busy. You're going to have your time eaten up. You're going to have so many responsibilities. And we have to stop and ask, is that what you really want? What do you actually want? What do you want to feel? Do you want to feel constantly stressed and strained for time? It's nice to think about having enough money that we could get the home that we want. And especially in today's economy, I mean, many people can't even house or feed ourselves. And we're talking about middle-class people are losing their homes. It's anyways, that's a whole other thing. But <laughs> yes, I, I love the idea of feminine desire and feminine manifestation. It's a whole new thing that's making its way out and it's, it's going to be fantastic and it's going to be big. And thank you for being a leader in that, for a voice for that. I don't hear that as often and I want to hear more of it. <laughs> I want to, if you are holding any retreats around this, I want to go. I know you're, you're doing something soon, some kind of gathering <laughs> a retreat. Do you want to share? Yeah, I'm so thrilled to be gathering women for a women's rewilding weekend in Nevada City, California, or no, actually it's a four day retreat It's going to be incredibly deep work of reclaiming the feminine, reclaiming our connection to nature. And, um, oh my gosh, so many, so many things. I don't know where to, I, I, I just want to make one comment on what you said. I know we're like wrapping up, but what you said, what you just said about, um, about the masculine and the feminine is like, so the pussy, the whole experience of what is going on in a woman's, um, how much tension is in her pelvic floor 
And what are the energetics of a women's pelvic floor and pelvis? It is the environment for sex. So like any, the, when the masculine enters the feminine or any, like any, or fingers enter the feminine, whatever happens, the, the, it's like walking into a house. What is, is that house cluttered? Is it, it, are there things piled up? Is it like really dark and tense and it feels like, or is it spacious and luxurious and there's just like a place to go like down and it's open and receptive and it just makes you want to come in and just like lie down and like just stretch and feel. And so it is that all of this intensity we're talking about in our culture with the masculine, it's like the feminine actually is heals the masculine. And I'm, and this is true within ourselves, as well as what many find in, in, in even hetero relationships or just in general, like the, the earth is for me a very feminine energy and she has the capacity. If we let, if we, if we open to her infinite healing power, to heal, to be the balm that soothes this masculine drive and this masculine life for us. And this is so much the power of the feminine is that it's like, we don't have to push. We don't have to, you know, like if we allow, and then we allow our masculine to take the action to protect that, then the healing that's available for us personally, as well as for our pe the people around us, as well as for the, the collective, this is where the magic is at. It's where it's at. It's, it's where it's at. Awesome. And it's happening. And my goodness, Haley, this has been such an incredible conversation. <laughs> so good. I, I totally like, did not expect that. <laughs> I, I feel like we opened this big like portal and we should just stay here and just like, we're bringing something through. We're going to have to do this again because it's, yeah. Um, yeah. And I just, I knew I needed this conversation. The second we got on our zoom, I just felt, Oh, okay. This is going to be big. There's something that, and it, it, I just, I can't, I just keep feeling it's like we're, we have a womb right here and everyone listening is collectively gathering in this womb of joining together to, for the conception of what's going to be born soon. And that's what women are doing. As we gather together, we are collectively creating a greater womb that is creating a sacred space to birth. What is cannot, what is coming and cannot be stopped. Absolutely. 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 What an honor to be part of this incredible moment in history. It really is. How exciting. And it's going to be so much fun. We get to gather together, uh, we get to, you know, we'll stay connected. We'll, we'll yes. collaborate further. Beautiful things are happening. And Haley, if people who are so moved and by this powerful conversation would like to find you to work with you, how can they do so? Mm -hmm. So my, um, the best way to connect with me is my website. That's exploring body, mind, freedom.com. That's all one word, exploring body, mind, freedom .com. Um, Instagram is at body, mind, freedom. And that's the same for Facebook. And I want to, I'm so excited. I have a new ebook um, that is all about reconnecting to the cycles of women, reconnecting to the cycles of nature and the cycles of their hormonal system. And I really like, I went to town on it. I went to town on it because I'm so passionate about this. I can tell, you know, your stuff as you were speaking, <laughs> I was like, this needs to be in written form. This needs to be studyable. Yeah. So I have that as a free gift. Um, it'll be up on my website in a week. So I'm sure whenever you're listening to this, like this will be up on my website. And so I want to spread this among as many women as possible, just as an access point. And it's really um, the approach that I took with it is really what are the spiritual superpowers of each of these four seasons of our moon cycle? And so instead of this kind of one size fits all um, internal growth practice or movement practice or exercise practice or a spiritual practice. It's like, how can we really harness the hormonal gifts of that moment in our cycle so that we can just maximize the beautiful, um, potency that's available. And it's like 
rocket fuel. I find like really dropping in in this way, it's like rocket fuel for our mm-hmm. lives and for our connection to our bodies and for a connection to our soul. So, so excited to offer that to anyone who's up for it. Just check it out at exploringbodymindfreedom.com. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I can't thank you enough, Haley. This is such a incredible conversation. I loved every second of it. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the work that you do. I can't wait to see more of it and what's to come. Glad to be in this wild time with you on this wild run. (laughs) Same, same. Thank you so much for having me, Whitney. Thank you for all the beautiful, incredible, and imperative work that you're doing with this podcast. Thank you so much, Haley. Take good care. See you again soon.